Oh dear. Right. That's going to be some sort of clue then. Demands. Okay. Right, so I need to go to his office. Combin never thought he'd be so happy to be back at the Seto. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combi could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Dr. Gray's office is at the bottom of this, well, on the bottom floor. I could just go all the way down these stairs, right? I need the key. Ah. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that dick fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, like us. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. Just help me Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. Right, okay. Hmm. The two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Combi figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Dosetto, and Combi wasn't sure who he could trust. Uh, right. Whoa! Christ, what the hell was that? It's blocked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go down and up, aren't I? as well right okay maybe for the library it is So I gotta put a ladder down. What? I can't leave. I got a job to do. Spare key to Dr. Gray's. Hmm. I need the key. I don't have the combination for this. Maybe Jeremy did. Who 
new time again. Is that it? Nine one three. He must first. All right, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put my talisman to use. What was this thing again? One nine three. All right, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put nine one three. To use. Nine one. Three. It worked. There we go. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Until now. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. No worries, Crafty. This is clearly See you later. A to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my 
chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. I don't know what's going on lately. I don't know why my graphics... Not my graphics card. I don't know why my capture card keeps doing this. It's really annoying. I don't know why it's doing this. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't like full screen mode. I don't know. It's, it's really annoying. Doing, I don't know why it's doing it lately. I really don't get it. Uh, I think I can just go back this. No. Wouldn't it be? It'll be upstairs, wouldn't it? But yeah. That, uh, I just doesn't like you. Well, Jim. Shut up. Alright, just shut up. Detective Conby. Good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids. Ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? That is just something about tonight. Something is different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. Yeah, but I don't understand why it would be a full screen mode thing when I don't know. I don't I don't get it because it comes it came out of full screen mode, went straight to, onto like desktop, and then my capture card went funny. So I don't know if it's just a, a PC thing. Uh, where am I going now? McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Greece. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember, but couldn't. It might be a full screen. Nope. Thing. First floor, okay. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. I think this is it. I need to go all the way down, I think. I need a key for that. Cape coat. Jack Perry, anyone? Whoa. Need the key. 
feet. Radiography. Patient Jeremy Hartwood. Date June 14, 1930. Plates. Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations. Even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance, as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have weights order a new one. Okay, some weird stuff going on. Okay, so I need another one of those. that way what about this door oh here we go don't mind if I do well, that was a bad idea doing that the uh oh here it is is this it yeah this is it okay what if i did that Oh, like that. I see. Bam. Okay. 
Uh, Jeremy's darkness. Broken piece of burnt clay is the size of just part of a statue. Of a statue. Yes, very scuffed. <laughs> I had to look it up because I didn't know how precise you had to get it. Um. Oh. Whoa. Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, what am I supposed to do? I guess I'm supposed to just wait my way up before I drown. Oh, I see. Oh man, one of these type of games. Up, 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 up. Keep going. Huh. Okay, there we go. And we're back here. Well, perfect time to have a look around this place. Oh. Huh. Oh no. Six one or four one six. Four six one. That a what? Oh, there's something. There's probably something in here, right? No. What is that? No worries, Ben. All good. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is, whoa. This is where Jeremy's hiding from, right? Hello? Is anyone there? Jeremy? I need help! Wait. Can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking me. Jeremy, where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Jeremy was calling out for help, but Condi couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. For a moment, Condi wondered if the boat itself was Jeremy, 
or if he was below it somehow. It didn't matter right now. Jeremy was clear on one thing. He wanted Carmi to get the steamboat running and out of the mud. Okay. Got enough bullets, I think. I need to get out of the mud. Whoa! What the hell are you? reversing back into the river that's locked i'll go that way i go down go down i go through here i can jeremy where are you compass Came from that way, didn't I? Let's go up a floor. On the way to the engine room below deck. in the suitcase nothing hit the hatch yet mind if I do looks pretty weak I just need some uh. okay, that's that's done uh, let's go to the back of the boat if anything's there. Okay. Pick it. We are going through here. I wanted to go down, thank you.
I think it's a below deck. Here we go. Empty gas can. There we go. Okay, and there we go. Right, I need to go back up to the top now. Somehow. This way. What the hell? Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Let's go the other way. There we go. Yo, Roland, how you doing? Are we doing good? Are we doing well, dude? Nice beard, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. How you keeping? Thanks for the likes, dude. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, am I supposed to go? Which way am I supposed to be going for this? Is it this way? I think it's this way, right? Yeah. Or not. I think I'm supposed to go down below. Yeah, how are you keeping? Yeah, I'm supposed to go down there, I think. Yeah, that's it. There you go. How are you not dead? There you are. Ow! Really? I thought I'd killed you. Work soon. Oh, you're doing a night shift again. <laughs> Is that. Oh, but you're good. I'm glad you're good. Good. Uh, I think I've got all of those. Oh, uh, you can guys can stay there. Three shifts every week. We change. Oh, so is it like free on, free off then?
I think he's in here that I'm supposed to go. No, he's week, day, night, evening. Ah, uh, okay. But right, I get it now. I'm all out of bullets. I'm just gonna have to fight these with a hatchet. I understand it now. Right. Oh my god, there's more. If I can reload up, with great. No worries. Thank you so much for the uh, likes. I appreciate it. Thank you for sticking around as well. See you later. Ah, that's fine. There we go. Uh, is it down one more? I need to go. I can hear the music. I'm supposed to go towards the music, right? Yes, it is, Jim. How you doing? How you doing, Jimbo? You're doing good. But yes, it is. Uh, hello. Hello, Jimbo. How you doing? I know I'm supposed to go towards this music. But I have no idea how you're supposed to... Yeah, it's good to see you as well. Hope you've been keeping well. I know you went to Insomnia. Like, this weekend. Okay, what am I... Release the steam from the... Into the river. Oh. oh, I see. It was good just being recovering apart from for next week. What have you got going on next week? Ah, here we go. This is where I need to be. I can't even grab that over there. Oh, here we go. That's what it's supposed to be, I think. I've got this, and I'm going to play Hellblade. At... I've got this, and i got Hellblade in terms of next games, because Hellblade 2 comes out next month, I believe. So yeah, I'm going to be playing Hellblade at some point. Oh, what? A Hellblade? Yeah. That's a good game. Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, fair enough. Look forward to it. I'm on chapter 4 out of 5, so I got the last chapter after this. Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. 
I didn't play my part. Hey! I escaped hey. my doom. My destiny. Again, find Hey, focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Oh, everything is wrong. Nothing is in play. Hey! I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually, I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. 